Hi, welcome to my review of Oberheim Options in the Studio. I've got this little bad boy I've recently picked up. It's Oberheim, but it's a SEM filter, or a SEM style filter I should say. You might have enjoyed that bit of a Prince track that I've just put together. The Revolution were famous for using Oberheim, so Tom Oberheim helped design this. But it's got a SEM style filter. The OPX2's got options, the Diva has, the Axis Virus have. In fact, they've all got SEM style options or ones I'm going to be playing through today. So we've just seen the OB6 that I've purchased and this is really just a way of me um, justifying the purchase really. I'll put up another video describing how the SEM filter works and what exactly a SEM filter is. But here we've got an Artoria SEM V2. So it's got the SEM low pass, smooth through to notch and then high pass. And it's effectively an emulation of a SEM. I use this quite a lot, I quite like this. It's got a nice sound to it. And what else have we got here? We've got the Diva. What I found listening to the waveforms, um, it sounds more like the OB6 when a place sounds using the Moog oscillators on this. But here's the OB filter, low pass up to a notch. I don't know what BR stands for. So it's got band pass mode or band, uh, uh, don't know. No idea what that means. So high pass notch again. So that's the same as the OB6. Then the OPX. They've been around for a while now, but when it came out, I think it's about 10 years ago, they were the only Oberheim emulation you could get. And in fact, I bought a Pro 8 based on a demo of this. I heard a demo of this. Well, I played a demo of this uh, and it made some really nice sounds and I'd seen a YouTube video showing the Pro 8 versus I think it was an OB8. Um, and I thought this sounded so good that I, that I bought the Pro 8, didn't buy this. One of the great things about this is it's got these banks called test patches, I think, which are basically initial patches to show you how the whole thing works. This could really do with an update on the GUI though, I think. So this is mixing between the low pass and the high pass, band pass and the notch. So you can mix between the low pass and the notch and that's ex effectively the same as the SEM filter. But it's a little bit of a faff, but it does mean it's probably a bit more flexible. So we've got Syntronic here. This is sample based. It's got 17 instruments in it. And each of them has the same set of parameters that you control with different GUIs. So let's load up a Juno 60 patch. It takes a couple of seconds because it's loading samples. So you've got various filters. You've got a Moog type, Roland type, Curtis type, Oberheim type, plus some other things. Loads the patch. You've got different slopes. The LFO's got five waveforms. And as I said, you have the same parameters for every one of the synths in this. So let's go to what they call a SAM, which is the SEM. Load the instrument. This is loading a square lead. And if we go and edit it, you see we've got the same filter settings, M type, R type, C type. So you can use any of the samples with the various filter types. So the filters have been modeled, but the oscillators have been sampled. And what I've found while I've been using this is that I've used various waveforms from different synthesizers. So I think I used the DCO synth down for the square waves. It's quite interesting that it's a digital oscillator that sounds closest to the others I'm testing. And I did that just to get it sounding closer to the other synths in this, really. But this is great. It's got real balls to some of the sounds. But you can't change the oscillators once you've loaded the sound. You can't change the pulse width on them. You can't change the sync or FM unless it's in the original preset. Oscillator 2 you can bring in if it's in the original sample. And you can turn it on and you can detune it. So you're stuck with the original samples that are in there in the first place. I've not loaded them all into this laptop. But there's plenty in there. In fact, there's thousands of them actually if you load the whole thing in. It's, it's great. Let's have a look now at the Access Virus TI. And that's got two filters. You can put one on low pass and one on band stop, which is a notch. That you can put in series and parallel and change the filter balance between them. So that's effectively like an Oberheim SEM style, because you can blend between the two. Low pass. Bring in a bit of notch. So you can get SEM style sounds from this. It's a bit more fiddly, as it is with the OPX, but that does give you more flexibility, perhaps. And then there's this, which is brand new to me. I don't know how long it's been out. So like the others, it's not a faithful emulation. You can mix the oscillators, for example, which you can't do on the original, using these blends here. You've got oscillator 2 detune. 
you've got a spread function like you do on the original OBX. It's a bit like on the Dave Smith instrument slot function, and it's a bit like what you have on the OPX. Let's just get the OPX up again. So we have an initial patch. We've got different filter modes on this actually. So it's got normal, damped, bit darker, bit duller. We've got clear. I think I've used clear for most of this actually, just because it sounded more like the others. And brilliant, that puts a little resonant peak at the higher frequency. So let's go back to normal. This has got this spread mode as well. So it can go really nastily out of tune, which is nice. You've got the different trimmers you can set for each of the six voices. And these can affect the filter, the envelope and the oscillator. Also, you've got pans down here on the right. This helps to tweak it, make it sound old, and it sort of has like a chorus effect when it does that. And it can do 24 dB as can this OBXD and the virus. Diva also has the detune functions on the trimmers. Go into the trimmers. There you go, you can detune per voice. Let's also look at the Artoria SEM. These can do it per voice as well. It's not quite the same, it's not as random. So you can hear it changing there per voice. Syntronix has like a drift algorithm that it uses to try and get some sort of analog inconsistencies in there as well. So they're all really quite good at putting analog richness in there. Okay, to kick off, let's just look at the notches. So I've created some WAV files as I did with the Minimoog video. So here we've got OB6 in blue, Artoria in red, Divas in brown. The OPX2 is that in blue. Syntronix purple. Virus is a weird yellow and the OBXD is in green and I keep to this throughout and I've even color coded the mix at the bottom Okay, let's stick them all on together quickly and get up the frequency analysis of them This is just noise and I've put a notch in at one kilohertz Syntronic doesn't appear to have a noise sample in the in all the thousands of samples it has but if it does it's not called noise Which is a bit annoying So maybe it does I just haven't been able to find it so we can see around one kilohertz, they're all doing roughly the same thing. Looks like the diva's a bit wider. It looks like the trough in the virus is a little bit thinner. So it'll give them all slightly different characteristics to the notch. But they're all doing it. So let's just get some sawtooths up. Um, I'm not expecting these to sound the same in any way. It's really just to listen to the, to listen to the character of, of the synths. Do you like the sound of them or not? These aren't all going to sound the same. They're not designed to sound the same. This is just, what do they sound like and which do you prefer? The phases of those are slightly different. Some of them are 90 degrees out. The OPX, the virus, and the OBD. Virus looks a bit different as well. The Artoria Sem sounds duller or warmer, however you want to say it, uh, throughout this. Nice and bright with the Diva. This has got a distinctly different tone to the rest of them on the Sawtooth. And you can also hear it slightly out of tune. And it was bizarre when I turned it on and I played the notes. They're a bit out of tune, didn't realise till I put it all together. But I think it's maybe because the trimmer on the oscillator I was using was slightly out. So even though the synth was tuned to perfect pitch, the oscillator I was using was was, was tuned out. So when using just the one oscillator, uh, obviously it puts, puts the tuning out. So if you're playing single oscillator mono sounds, just something to be aware of there. So they're all slightly different, but you know, you can't tell much from just listening to a sawtooth. But if you were trying to get a particular tone, you'd probably only get out of one of these. So you can see here, I've got levels all about the same. And let's just quickly throw those into the analyzers and take a quick look at them. I've just took a screenshot of that because for some reason I only sampled a really short section. I don't want to linger on this too much because they're never going to sound the same. They're not meant to sound the same, as I say. 
But I do think it's interesting that they all look quite similar but sound quite distinct. Let's have a listen across a few octaves. Again, they all sound quite nice throughout the four octaves. They were all open on a low pass. Let's put a one kilohertz notch in there. So that's the typical SEM sound there. You've got a low frequencies and a high frequencies and you've got a little bit missing in the middle. And they all do it quite well. So again, just taking a shot of the screen on the one kilohertz notch with the sawtooth. And you can see everything's behaving sort of as you'd expect. I'm not going to get them sounding the same, and I'm not trying to get them sounding the same. I know I've said that before, but it's just worth reiterating, I think. This is about, do you like the sound of it, really? Rather than, is it exactly a sound? Does it sound exactly like an Oberheim? So here I'm going to leave it in notch mode. I'm just going to modulate the cutoff frequency just again just to get a feel for how they how they sound that's lovely and smooth sounding that isn't it Again, really nice, really nice to stem. I've got it on the iPad as well. I think it must be the same algorithms. I think it's really pleasant to listen to. Again, nice, slightly different, but still nice. have to say I'm not overly keen on the sound of the sawtooth on this. But together in a mix, in a chord with all the trimming parameters on it, giving a lovely sort of chorus effect, it does sound really lush. So maybe this isn't a fair comparison. But I'll put some chords in later. Again, nice. It's a bit harsher sound than it's a bit grittier. But I do like it, it's got a nice character to it. The waveforms have been sampled off the real thing, so I'm assuming they're accurate. It sounds a bit lifeless to me, that. I've thrown it in because it's got the band stop filter in there and it can do SEM style sounds, but it doesn't have the same life. I mean, a lot of people knock the virus, but I've got, I've got a lot of time for it. But I'm quite a fan of it, I like it, I think it can do an awful lot of stuff. But you do find that if you're trying to make it sound like anything else, it doesn't quite hit the spot. Although it can do so much, like trying to make it sound like the Minimo doesn't work, trying to get it to sound like the Prophet 6 doesn't work. You wouldn't expect it to, it's not what it's for. It's not designed to sound like them. But, you know, no one's interested in that when it's on the mix and it sounds good, no one cares. Were you trying to sound like a Prophet 6 or a, or a Moog, you know? If it's sounding good, it's sounding good. Again, this one sounds a little bit lifeless to me. Let's just try it again compared to the Arturia. And maybe compare it with a real analog filter. Oh, it's really difficult, isn't it? Because it, it doesn't sound bad. Is it just not as pleasing to the ear? I don't know. But considering one's two and a half thousand pounds and one's nothing, get a grip. Okay, what I've done now is I've modulated that with an LFO. That's uh, lovely and smooth. Nice 
nice and smooth again. Really like the sound of the Diva. I've never really played with the UB on it before. The Arturia had always been my first port of call, really. Because it looks like one and I'm simple like that. But the Diva's really shining in this. I'm not going to knock it. I don't think it's as nice as the Diva. But again, it's a different instrument. It's just sounds a bit different. As I said, I'd show you earlier, here's another Syntronic one using a different oscillator sample. So that was a sawtooth, as is this. So it just shows how different they can sound with using the different presets. So it really depends on what sample they've used. I don't know what it is. Am, am I going insane? But it just doesn't sound as alive. Or is my brain playing tricks on me? I think with the virus, as the resonance can go all the way to self-oscillation, I've turned it down a bit from when I originally did this. This is the second attempt at pulling the virus in. So maybe I've overdone that and maybe I'm just not giving it enough, enough juiciness because I've not got the, enough resonance in there. It's possibly my fault that. Nice again, no complaints there. Let's now put those in a chord. That sounds lovely, that does. So when all of these have put the slot factors or the, the trimmers on zero, trying to keep everything as tight as I can. Ah, Diva sounds great there. Let's go back to here. Wow, that's good. Let's start again. So you can hear that the OPX2 has got much more of a chorusy sound. And I've not spent hours and hours trying to get these the same, but, but if you look at the trimmers and you're trying to get them to tune all a bit better, maybe you could pull this in a little bit more and be a bit less chorusy. But I think one of the things that made this so desirable in the first place was the fact that you can do this, and that's that's part of its character. That's part of that's part of why people love it. It does have this richness to the sound, but you do have to be judicious in your use of it. As you can hear there, it's gone out of tune. Just like a real old synth. Not convinced with the Syntronic in that case. I don't think it sounds as nice as the others. That sounds all right there. Maybe I was giving it too much of a hard time earlier on. Maybe not quite as rich as the others, that one. Let's go back to the virus. Nice. Again, with this one, different presets using different oscillators on the Syntronic did give much different results. Hence me using the first one in the main part of the demo. Let's now add a beat to that, hear what it sound like in a mix. A little bit of chorus, just your standard logic chorus. And the platinum reverb.
was picking winners, I'd go for Diva in that. Virus sounds nice as well. They all do. Least favourite at the minute on, on this is the OPX. Not sure why. Although they all do the job really quite well. I feel like I'm being really harsh on the OPX. And I'm not. I do like it. And it feels like whoever's developed it's really got a passion for it and, you know, tweaked it and put lots of little extras in there. They've really gone to town on it. So I don't want to knock it because I like it and I like the effort that's been put into it. And I do like a lot of the sounds. They're just not pulling them out in this demo, which is annoying, actually. Because when I'm breaking it down into really simple parts, like here's a saw, here's a, here's a chord with it, it's not sounding as good as it can and it's not showing in its best light. And it doesn't sound like it would fit as well in the mix as it actually really does. Let's look at some simple pulses then. I'm using the notch filter and I'm just modulating the cut off as I did before to give the OB feel, the SEM feel. favourite there is by far the OB6 and the OPX is sounding a bit better so I don't feel so bad now. Let's have a listen to those with some drums and a little bit of a delay and you can see I'm trying to get the levels as close as I can to match. They all cope really, really well with that. You'd have trouble picking one out from another, I think. Okay, let's have a look at the resonance now. And as you may know, as you increase the resonance on um, an OB filter on one of these 12 dB filters, you don't lose the bass end like you do on a Moog filter, typically. So we should be listening to that on all of these and how they transition from the high frequencies to the low. So let's start off with some lovely analog juiciness from the OB6. <laughs> Nice. Well, you'd hope it was, wouldn't you? And I'm praying it is after spending all that money. It's nowhere near as smooth, that. And I noticed that in the Jupiter Rate video, where there's like a little, it sort of jumps, like a little pop in the filter as it reduces down at the low end. Did that on the Jupiter Rate comparison video as well, on the Artoria models. Watch this. At the low ends. That little pop at the very low frequencies. Not quite as smooth, but it's, you know, it's still, it's been my sort of go-to SEM to play within this studio up until now. So I'm being very picky here. Nice and smooth again. Not sure if that sounds as rich. Let's just try it again. It could just be that sorted. I'm really not keen on it. Don't know why that is. Yeah, 
It's nice. It's got a real weird bright resonance peak at the end there. Let's have a look at that again. Yeah, it's there, but it's so high up, I don't think I can hear it. So the virus went into absolutely mad self-oscillation when I first entered the stove. I've had to pull it down a bit. Well, quite a lot really, to bring it in line with the others. Maybe you've taken it down a little bit too much, but it can do resonance and squelch as you like, and it's nice and smooth. Yeah, it sounds a little bit lifeless, that one, compared to the others, I think. But it does have a 24 dB slope as well, the OBXD. At this part of the test, I thought, let's just take a sound from one of the synths and see if we can emulate it. Even though they're not meant to sound the same, let's just try and emulate it on the others. I start with the OBXD because it's the most simple of them, and I thought I should be able to do something similar on the other synths. I've got one of the sounds, and I tried to emulate it on the OPX, much preferred the OPX version. And then I tried it on the Syntronic, then I much preferred the Syntronic to them. But then I tried it on the Diva, and I much preferred the Diva. And, I thought, and it's just because they all have their own characters. Once you start playing with the sounds, you can really, you know, you can really generate nice sounds out of all of these. They all sound good in their own ways. So I thought, let's go back. Let's keep it simple. Let's do like a resonant bass sound. So it's more about what feels nice rather than what's better. But it's, you know, it's which, which you prefer on a, on a personal level. So I was trying to get an 80s style juicy synth, I suppose. Which that definitely is. <laughs> and so is that. Wow. This really did excel at those sort of sounds then. There were some really meaty things coming out while I was playing playing around with it. Nice, but coming back to the theme of it maybe not sounding as loud. I mean, listen to this. Compared to this. The envelopes are slightly different, but still big difference there. Now let's have a listen to the Artoria. It's smoother, not as gritty, and you can see the filter doing that sort of popping, as I mentioned earlier, as the sound tails off. Anyway, here's Diva. Nice. Not as nice as the Syntronic, though. I want to play that again. I like that. Okay, and now the real deal analog. Definitely not the favourite from this. Uh-oh. Do we keep it? Two and a half grand? Oh, my God. Beautifully smooth as it fades out there. I really, I really do like that. Yeah, so I do think that shows the, the sort of typical characters of each of them, actually. I think that, although it's a simple test, I think it reveals quite a lot about them. But while I've been doing this, there's really been something that's been playing on my mind. And I do apologise to anyone out there with any musical sensibilities whatsoever for what I'm about to do. But I am demoing Oberheims, and they are famous for one thing in particular.
that's so cheesy, but I do love it. But it was a big spandex clad elephant in the room, I think. Anyway, moving swiftly on, here's something I just put together using each of the synths playing a different part. Just messing around, finding nice sounds, and I'm throwing it all together. It only took 10 minutes, but, you know, I think the results are quite nice. Imagine if you were back there in your leg warmers in the 80s, you know, in your, in your home studio, um, being able to do something like this in 10 minutes. Quite amazing, really. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, the question still remains, should it stay or should it go? Uh, of course it's going to stay. But, but what goes first? Another synth or my marriage? <laughs>